Hey guys, welcome to the second video of this new channel. Um, so, I really don't know where this video is going to go in the process of, with the whole quarantine going on, I haven't really had any good ideas for the next video. So, um, this video is supposed to be like a story time of like, things I've experienced, things I've survive through some things I've been through some things that just things that I've experienced in the last 10 years maybe maybe less maybe more I don't know for sure before we get started hit the subscribe button turn it from red to gray hit the bell icon right next to it notifies you when a new video comes out also join the fire fam do 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 that was probably copyright, but whatever. Um, like this video if you like story times and you like talking about things you've experienced. Um, also, comment down below what you want for the next video. Um, so, when I talk about story times, I like to have something in my hand or build something. So, I have these um, magnets that I bought off Amazon about two years ago so I'll be using those and I have a stress ball that I'll be throwing in the air trying to keep myself from um, getting distracted okay so back in I think 2010 or 2011 I was sent to a special program in Utah to help with my anger and I was there for two years um, and I don't remember a lot of what happened there because I just either have had my mind push it aside to like distract myself or pretend like it didn't really happen. But my parents have told me stuff happened there and I don't remember it. So I'm going to do it the best of my ability what I remember. Um, I remember breaking my arm. I had broken and fractured my growth plate on my wrist. So the bone that sticks out on your arm right here. This bone was on the other side of my arm. So, yeah, I was in two casts and two braces to um, correct the issue. They said if I ever did break it again, I'd have to get surgery. My arm could be short. It affected a lot. <laughs> um, I was told that I threw a trash can at a staff member, but I don't really remember. Um, so, in Utah, when I was at the placement, so um, what had happened was there was a, a unit for... All girls there was a unit for all boys and it was for people under I think 18 and then they had another facility for 18 and up um, probably 30 minutes away so it was a locked facility it was a level 14 level 14 means that there is locked doors and you can't leave unless you have the privilege or on a doctor's appointment um, they have key cards that you swipe to open the doors um, there was a routine, um, I think breakfast was at like 7 or 8 in the morning, depending on your unit, um, and you did school, and there's like different levels, so like level 0, or level 1, is like one-on-one -on -one with staff, like you did something self-harm, or did something like really, really bad, so you beat him on level 1. Level 2 was almost the same thing, but a little bit more ease and more like relaxed um level three and four were um good behaviors like you could go on outings and do fun things and stuff um and that and the unit like it was just, it's just like it's the unit was called a cottage so like yeah that went on um so after i left in 2012 uh it was April 22nd, 2012, I went home because, um, well, we all thought that I was a little bit better than I went in there for. Um, well, they were wrong. When I came home, I was in and out of mental hospitals. I had a wraparound team, which is four members that, like, 
help you. Like there's one, th there's a family therapist, a regular therapist, a parent therapist, and then a group therapist. So like it was just like to communicate better and get along better, and like that wasn't so easy. Um, I then went to the Gardner House. Um, it was the end of September till like towards the end of October before Halloween. Um, I was there. It was a, a group home to just help me, I guess, communicate more and like learn how to cope with my anger. Well, knowing that, I one day was at school and my teacher told me to take a timeout outside of the classroom to take a breather. And of course, I just wanted to walk around so there was like a upstairs which was all like the principal's office and then downstairs with the classroom and stuff. And so upstairs did have classrooms but it wasn't very much. So I would walk up and down the stairs and walk around. So I got suspended and my supervisor for my for the group home came and picked me up. I was pissed fucking pissed. And um he's like put your seatbelt on. I'm like, no, I'm not going to, because if you get arrested, it's going to be your fault, not mine. Like, you chose to drive without us, without me having a seatbelt, it's going to be your fault if you get in trouble. Like, yeah, I was terrible. I got back to the unit. They were having, because during school time, they had, like, meetings. So, that was the time they discussed every client. There was only six girls on the whole, in the whole entire group home. So, they discussed everything. Um, I went to my room. I... Got so mad, had a screaming, slamming doors, throwing things. That's when the supervisor called the police. And I had a walk in closet with my roommate. And I went into that closet and hid in the closet, the other part of the closet, so that when the police came, they didn't know where I was. Well, of course they did, <laughs> thinking that they didn't. Um, I was told to get out of the closet. I said no. I was told to get out again. 30 minutes later, I walked out of the closet. They wrestled me to get handcuffs on me. I was throwing punches. I was kicking. I was spitting. I was biting. I was... It was a nightmare. I didn't... I had a, I've had a history with police officers my whole entire life, so whenever a police officer comes towards me, I panic, and so I flip out. That's just normal for me, because I get like, it's like PTSD all over again. Um, I was not diagnosed with PTSD, but if, just a history with me, I just felt like it did. So, I got handcuffed, I was in handcuffs at the house for probably 20-25 minutes and then they took me to a mental hospital I was in handcuffs all the way to drive there and then in the drive and then I was in handcuffs when we got there for like 15 minutes I was still in the handcuffs so it was like I've been in handcuffs probably like two hours it felt like more but it wasn't um so I was at that mental hospital for I think a week my parents came because the group home was in LA and my parents lived in Laverne so that's like an hour two hours from LA so they had to drive and come pick me up I went home and I'm on that th at that time my parents were on a search to find another facility for me to go to and I didn't really have very many options so there was one in Montana one in Texas and one in Pennsylvania so Montana didn't take me because they thought it was a it was a ranch so they thought I would harm the animals even though I've never harmed an animal in my life um and then there was Pen uh, Texas which that was okay um I got accepted to that because if I had been accepted I'd go to Pennsylvania Pennsylvania is like a like a sane asylum not a sane asylum maybe you like it like a psych ward like you get strapped down to beds and in given um shots to like calm you and so, yeah it was like sedated I and mean, then like yeah no <laughs> I was lucky Texas took me in I went to Texas November 2nd 2012 I was there for exactly four years um I would have went home early but I kept every time I would get excited I end up screwing it up and then getting in trouble all over again so yeah it didn't really work out like I planned I did miss a lot in my in my 
family lives and my cousin's lives and everybody's lives. I don't think I ever went on a home pass, but I did go uh, for a weekend. I went with my parents at the hotel and slept there, and they had I had a lot of, like, on-campus visits because I kept screwing it up and, like, getting in trouble and stuff. Um, a lot went on there. Um, so what had happened was... I started a riot with a few of the girls. We were told, we were in line and we were told that we weren't ready to go to school and we had to wait to talk to our counselors, our therapists, um, till we were ready in to see if we were ready to go to school. We were mad. We went to our rooms. It was, I think there was like four girls that started the riot, but three girls originally that stayed back. It was me and my two friends. Um, and then the same thing with two of the boys. They were told to stay back. So, um, we, I just can't believe we did this. Um, I'm not proud of it. I've never been proud of what I've done in my, in my past, but I did do it, so I can't take it back. Um, we started tearing things down off the walls. We were throwing things. We were closing the wing doors so that my unit, okay. I should stop for a second backtrack to when I first went there there was unit six unit four and unit five were together on one side of the campus unit one two and three were on the other side of the campus I was on unit six it was a mixed unit so boys and girls were combined it was a co-ed unit and then unit four was a girls unit and like I think became a boy a co-ed unit unit five was a boys unit Unit 1 was adults, and Unit 2 was borders, which mean they would border from either, I think, border from 1 to 2. Unit 3 wasn't a unit. Um, my third, second or third year there, Unit 6 became a foster unit, which wasn't really open, but it was planned on it, and we moved to Unit 3. So what happened before then, that, that riot, we literally, there was a girl... My best friend now, we hated her at the time. Me and this other, me and my friend, my me and my roommate didn't like her because we thought she was just a crybaby and we didn't like her. But now I'm friends with her, so it's like dead issue. But um, she was on one on one, and she was in the middle wing. So there was a west wing, east wing, middle wing, and the middle wing had the nurse's desk and everything. So we were me and. The two other, or three other girls, maybe, I can't really remember for sure. More wandering around, closing doors, taking things off the wall, throwing things, running back and forth, jumping on the nurse's desk, jumping off, and like, yeah, that went on. Um, well, after that, the girl that was on one-on-one -on -one joined into it, and then that's when they called a code green, which is... Um, when someone needs to be restrained. And then they called a code... What was it? Code red, I think. No, fire, fire, red is fire. Green is restrained. Oh, code 99. That's a, a riot. And all these male staff literally came charging in. My best friend, Deanna, she was the first to get restrained. She was picked up by a male staff and threw got thrown into the quiet room and um, I'm not gonna say the other girl's name because we're not really friends we're just acquaintances acquaintances with each other but she got restrained next after they all bombarded us I kicked a staff in the knee he dropped her picked me up slammed me on the ground and literally uh, my nose I really sensitive because when I was younger I broke my nose so any type during restraint my nose would bleed and so in the middle of restraint I'm have a bloody nose um, the boys are getting restrained people are being taken off the unit I finally after a while calmed down and I was taken to my to the hallway in the middle wing and everyone that was involved with the riot got their stuff taken away every single item was taken from their room to because it was considered it could be used either as a weapon or self-harm 
my best friend Deanna had hurt her knee. I had hurt my uh, ankle. This other girl hurt her head. Dude, the male staff are aggressive. They just automatic soldier move and they're like totally crazy. Um, while being there, I did get arrested, but on an accusation that wasn't true. I was told I broke a staff member's rib when you later on find out it was a staff member that did it, but they blamed me because they didn't want to get in trouble. So yeah, that happened. Um, after that, I went home for a couple weeks of, um, uh, August 16th, 2000 16. I went to San Diego for my step down facility. I was there for two months and after those two months I was arrested three times. Had a restraining order with a girl but the girl didn't want to follow the restraining order so I got arrested because of breaking a restraining order but this girl literally did it. I got The first time I got arrested there was because I did a criminal threat which I said I'm gonna kill you which is a criminal threat. Um, so don't say it ever in your life. Um, um, I had gotten a restraining order against the girl. The girl did not listen in class and they wouldn't move me. The principal wouldn't move me to another classroom so that I can respect the restraining order. And I got arrested two other times after that. Um, after that, my parents told the staff members, oh, she's going on a home pass. Like, we'll bring her back when she's ready. Never went because the judge said, you either go to the facility or you stay in juvie. And, of course, my parents are like, no. So, they pretty much lied to the facility. They're like, they kept calling every once in a while and saying, when is she coming back? When is she coming back? And they're like, we don't know. She's not ready yet. Like, I don't know. I never went back. <laughs> I graduated high school 2017, uh, June 7th, 2017. Um... And at that time, I did start YouTube, which is my other channel. So, that's a speed version of what happened in my life. 17 minutes worth. Um, my legs asleep. Um, I can always go into, like, other details about, like, when I was younger or what my life is like now or whatever. But I don't want to make this video, second video so long because then you guys won't really, like interested continuing watching it um so i would like you guys to comment down below what you want to see next um my painting if you have not seen it the painting i was doing a couple weeks ago is now done i finished it about a week ago i can always do an asmr video but also i would have to do that at night um, also, I need to learn how to contain my breathing when I'm doing those, so I will make sure if you guys want those, I will do them. So just comment down below what you want to see in the next video. I love you guys, and see you next time. Bye! Bye! Oh, before we close that, I just realized. Stay safe, wash your hands, and say, use social distancing. Don't want any of my subscribers to get sick. Love you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!